Welcome back, everybody. And if you're new here, my name is Sarah. I live in the Sprinter van full time with my dog, Kawa. And today we're going to talk all things van electrical. This van was built three years ago by Tommy Camper Vans out of Phoenix, Arizona. So it was professionally built. I'm not an electrical professional. I did not install my own electrical system. However, that's actually the point of this video. Because I remember when I was thinking about doing van life and designing a van, I had no idea how the electrical system worked. And when I started looking into it, I got really overwhelmed by it. And I think that's because a lot of the information out there is from people who can build an electrical system and have a really deep understanding. And that is amazing information. And I think I'm here to kind of bridge the gap between that and myself as a consumer who has a lot of practical use and a good understanding, but can keep things really simple and in layman's terms. One of the reasons I'm doing this video right now is because I just got my entire system redone and upgraded by Tommy Camper Vans. So we are gonna go into the garage, we're gonna look at the components, and we're just gonna kinda of see how things work. I think if you are thinking about doing van life or building, buying, designing a van, this will be a really good foundational electrical video for you. And if you're not thinking about any of that and you just really like van life content, I think you'll still have some fun just learning about how van electrical works, how I use my system. I have a battery monitoring system now with a screen and we're gonna look at it and turn things on and off all over the van and just kind of see how power gets pulled from the batteries and just how all of this electrical stuff works in here. Here's my new electric system and let's briefly talk about why I upgraded. So back when my van was first built, Tommy Vans was using a completely different system. I had a mix of Renogy and SOK batteries, just kind of a random battery company. And to be honest, I was having a lot of issues in the last couple months, and that's not a knock against the components or the installation or anything like that. I don't know exactly what my issue was. I actually think my batteries were bad off of the bat. I got them cheap on Amazon, and sometimes you get what you pay for. So anyway, Tommy Vans has ditched everything that they used to do, and they now install these full Victron electric systems. That's what these blue components are here. It's a company called Victron, and I'm not sponsored by Victron or anything like that. Trust me, I wish that I was, because full transparency, these components are definitely pricier than your average electric component. I did talk to Tommy Camper Vans about price, and... For them to do a full upgrade, like say you were to take your van to Tommy Vans and do an upgrade of your system, it starts at $7,900. And it's super case dependent, obviously, because all vans are different. Um, but I did want to throw that out there because I know a lot of people ask about price. And anytime that I'm able to share that, I definitely will. So anyway, I'm super happy with the upgrade. Uh, in my opinion, the price is worth it. That's just my opinion, and I'm only one girl on the internet, so don't take that as a fact. I know there's probably other systems that work really well, but since I've had this system, I've been really happy with it. It works really well together. The battery monitoring is something I did not have before, and I am so happy that I have that now. We're going to go up front here in a little bit, and I'm going to show you all of that. But for now, let's just touch on all the basic components so that you can understand how a system like this works. So the foundation, like the guts of your system are your batteries. You can't see mine, they're behind this board here. I have 500 amps of lithium battery. I had 400 installed originally. I went out and tested it and I wound up going back just the other day to get one more put in. So I have a total of 500. In my opinion, I think 400 amps seems to be a pretty good sweet spot for somebody who lives on the road full time. Again, that's just my opinion and my experience. So you have your battery capacity and then you need a way to charge your batteries. I have three ways in this van. First is I have a DC to DC charger, also called an alternator charger. And all that means is as soon as I turn my ignition on, I'm getting power from my vehicle battery up front through this into my house batteries. I rely on that the most. I get 50 amps from that alternator charger and I'm getting charge anytime I'm driving. Second, I have solar. I have 300 watts of solar on the roof and the energy goes from the solar through this solar charge controller here and into my batteries. The most I've ever seen is 18 amps in full sun clean panels, but on average I probably see somewhere in the teens. 
And then I'm able to plug in to shore power with an extension cord. So I can plug in from the van to a campsite or a wall outlet. I hardly ever do that, but I can get 20 amps if I charge that way. So you have your batteries, you have your methods of charging. You can choose which ones you want. You don't have to have all three. And then you need to be able to use the power. So this is a distribution box and it just connects the batteries to everything in the van. And how it works, and this is something that I learned as I started using the system, is that some things are just hardwired right into your batteries. So my fridge, it needs to be on 24 seven, so it's hardwired. I have a panel of switches up front that I'll show you that's all hardwired. My lights and stuff like that is all easily turned on and off by switches and it's hardwired to the batteries. Then there are other things that can't be hardwired and they plug into normal everyday household outlets. Those things need to be plugged in and the power needs to go through this inverter first. So this is something that I learned about the hard way. <laughs> The first week that I got the van, I was cooking and I had my induction cooktop on, I had my inverter on, had my induction cooktop on, plugged in my air fryer, turned that on, all of a sudden everything stops working. It's like, huh, that's weird. Come to find out, this is a 3000 watt inverter. I didn't know what that meant, but now I know that means that you can't push more than 3000 watts through the inverter at the same time. So my induction cooktop and my air fryer was too much at once. So I blew the fuse on my inverter and I replaced it. It wasn't a big deal. I learned and now I only use one major appliance at a time. So that's your inverter. And then you have, at least in this system, I'm able to monitor my batteries. So this component here, and then there's a little shunt behind here that you can't really see is just all of this is talking to each other through those components and then it's sending it up to a screen up front so that I can see exactly what's going on. We're gonna head up front, we're gonna look at my electrical cabinet and we're gonna look at the screen and we're gonna just kind of play with some stuff so that you can see how the power gets pulled throughout the van. This is my electrical cabinet. And just side note, I am so happy that I put all of my electrical in this cabinet and I could just shut it and have it not out on the walls, I think for an aesthetic purpose. It just feels really homey in here to not have all of this out on the walls. So just a little side note there, if you're thinking about building or buying, maybe hiding your electrical. I'm gonna bring you up here so that you can see up close and we're gonna go through everything that's in this cabinet. All right, we're gonna go through this left to right here. So this is the keypad for my Simply Safe system, which we're gonna go into this in a whole different video. I'm gonna do a video on the security systems that I have in the van. So we won't go into that now, but that is the keypad for Simply Safe. This is the module for my outdoor cameras. It's from a system called Blink. Again, we'll go into that in a later video. And that is plugged into this outlet here. These outlets are turned on and off by this one that says cigarette socket. This is how I charge my phone and all other appliances. I personally only turn my inverter on and plug things into outlets when I absolutely need to. Some people have their inverter running all the time and use it really often. I really only turn mine on when I need it. That's just what has worked for me. So I charge everything with this cigarette socket, all these outlets here. This is a WeBoost. It's mounted on the roof rack and then the receiver is over here on the right. And this is how I turn my WeBoost on and off. These are under cabinet lights. These are exterior lights on the side of the van. This is the switch for my Starlink, which used to be the switch for my exterior lights on the back of the van, but I actually stole the wiring and used it for Starlink. I did have to get a little power inverter, but this has been working great being able to turn my Starlink on and off with this switch. And then this is my water pressure. So anytime I want to use my water, I turn that on, turn the water on, and then turn it off when I'm not using it. These are the lights overhead and they're on a dimmer. This is a Verizon Jetpack. I don't use this as much anymore because I have Starlink, but I do actually have my cameras connected to it, which is nice not having to use the Starlink for my cameras. And then this is just regular outlets. If I wanna use these, I have to turn my inverter on. As you can see, it's off right now and plug things into here if I need to. And then over here is the dial for my hot water heater. So my hot water heater is plugged into an outlet like this in the garage. 
And when I want to take a shower, I turn this to 30 minutes and it takes about 30 minutes for the water to heat up. And then up here we have my new battery monitoring system. So we're going to get a close up on this and we're going to turn things on and off. And I'm going to show you how this changes as we use power in the van. You can see in the middle on the bottom, it gives me my battery percentage and then my volts, amps and watts. Right above that, you can see my inverter. Right now I have it off. Then over on the left on the top, you can see it is disconnected from shore power. Those are my three charging methods like we were talking about. So I'm disconnected from shore power. I have 7.8 amps coming in from solar. And then on the bottom, the vehicle is off. So the alternator charger says zero, but that would say 50 amps if I turned the ignition on. Then over on the right, on the top is my AC load. Those are things that are plugged in to my inverter, which my inverter is off, so not, nothing is pulling power from there. And then DC load at four amps. Those are things that are hardwired. Okay, I have my phone set up on the battery monitor so that you can see this live the whole time. And I'll start by showing you the charging methods. So the van is off, so it says zero under alternator. But if I turn this on, it'll take a second and then it'll climb up to 50. Once the batteries are charged, I've been driving for a while, it will drop back down and just float and keep the batteries charged. I move usually every two to three days, so this is definitely what I rely on the most, charge the batteries. And if I turn it back off, it will drop back down to zero. Here's a live shot of the solar. Before I climbed up here, I think I saw that it was at about two amps, which makes sense because it is almost 545 in the afternoon. The sun is over there. It's a little bit cloudy and my panels are a little bit dirty. So that all makes sense. Today it was partly cloudy and I was seeing it around 10, 11 amps. I don't have the ability to plug into shore power right now, but if I did, that would go from saying disconnected to 20 amps. Let's just turn some things on and use some of the appliances so that you can watch the watts and the amps go up and down as I use different things in the van. Uh, so the inverter is on now. I turned it on, which means things that are plugged in can be used. My soap top is plugged in underneath. We're going to turn that on and turn the heat up. And you can watch the watts are up near about 800 watts right here. 869 there, 6.6 .6 for AC load. And you can kind of watch that go up as the stove top heats up. And if I put the heat higher, you'll see the amps and the watts go higher. Cool, let's shut that off. It'll go back down. And then let's turn the hot water heater on. It's that dial that you saw earlier. So if I turn that on, I think it pulls roughly the same around 800, almost 900 watts, 6.7 amps. And I'm running that every single day. So I would be considered a heavy electric user because I run an electric hot water heater, an induction cooktop, and an air fryer all daily. So like I said, I would recommend at least 400 amps for a full-time van lifer. If you don't use as many electric appliances, then you might need less. For me, I think 500 amps is going to be the sweet spot. Let's turn that off. And then other than that, I don't have many other things that I plug in. My water filter is plugged in underneath the sink, but it only draws about an amp or two, not even. And I only have it on for maybe 30 seconds to fill a water bottle. I have a vacuum plugged in down there, which I think takes about 0.6 amps. I think that's what that 0.6 is right there. And then if I turn some more simple things on, things that are hardwired. So we're going to look at the bottom right hand corner DC load. So if I have all my lights on, it goes up to about 7.3. So not bad, but if you have them on for extended periods of time, it can drain you a couple percentages. Let's turn that all off. My air conditioner. So this is actually one of the only times that I do look at where it says right here, the days and hours until your batteries would be drained. It's hard to really go off of that in general, just because your solar is always going up and down. And then, you know, if you drive for a couple hours, that's going to completely change. So I don't look at that much, except for when the AC is on. Let's do that. So now my AC is on and that will take a little bit to actually boost up and start pulling power. That is definitely the most power that is drawn in this whole van of any appliance. 
I really only use it when I leave Koa in the van by himself, which is not very often, but if I go to the grocery store or a coffee shop or something like that and it's warm in here, I'll turn that on. He sleeps up on the bed and the air is blowing right on him, so he loves it. I set up a little camera here, uh, again, part of my blink system so that I can keep an eye on him. We're going to do a whole video on Koa in, at a later time, so security system video is coming, a video on Koa is coming. But anyway, I'm waiting for this to kind of pop up. As you can see now, bottom right-hand corner, it's at about 28 amps, and it went to one day, nine hours, and that'll even drop lower than that. So again, I use that sparingly, but I absolutely need it with having Koa in here. I can turn the max air fan on and open the windows and actually get it really cool in here, but I'm not comfortable doing that when I'm not in the van with Koa. So to keep me cool, I'll just use the max air fan with windows open, but to keep Koa cool while everything is locked up and he's safe in here, I use the air conditioner. As I mentioned, I wanted to keep this really simple, basic, easy to understand. Hopefully we achieved that. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will definitely respond to as many as I can. Also, if you have any feedback, please feel free to comment things that you would like to see going forward. Any constructive criticism, I take feedback really well. You cannot hurt my feelings and it can only help at this time where I'm really just building up this channel. This is only my third YouTube video coming out here. So any feedback, really appreciated. And if you're enjoying this, a little thumbs up, it goes a really long way and really helps with the engagement to push the channel out. I'm really enjoying this long form space and it definitely is a learning curve and things are taking me forever right now, but I'm really enjoying it. So we will see you guys next week. So I wanna build the gap between maybe build bridge. It's called bridging the gap. about out there, oh, shoot. You're close, Sarah, you're close. I can't talk. You're on the top right. Whoa, we just had a massive influx of bees. Holy this is crazy. Whoa, okay, now there's like, a lot of them break components here and this is going to be the last take